What do you say, everybody? With Jay Barker, I'm Mick Gillespie. It's time for Crimson Tide Headlines right here on the Bama Insider YouTube channel, part of On3. Like and subscribe. Great to have you guys as a part of everything that we're doing here. And I want to remind you to be part of it by hitting the thumbs up. That's how you say Roll Tide. And uh, also hit the bell so you know when we go live, our goal is to get 500 or more um, likes. And uh, we're going to talk a lot of Alabama football today. We got former national champ Trent Richardson, who uh, played against Texas coming up. We got a video of Sark that's interesting here on Crimson Tide Headlines. But the headline, Jay, is the new top 25 just came out and Alabama's number one. First, though, what's up, my man? Man, doing well. Hope you're doing well. And um, yeah, great to be back on and doing the headlines. And there we go. We got the AP top 25 sitting up there. But Big weekend. Alabama, I thought, played really well. Both sides of the football, special teams. The only breakdown was that block punt. But other than that, as we talked about on the post game, is that, um, man, this is a team right now that just reloads every year. Got great talent on both sides of the football. Playmakers that they've got from the transfer portal. Thought Jermaine Burton looked great with the two touchdowns. Trayshawn Holden as well. So um, just a lot of really positive things. That receiver group probably about six deep, maybe seven deep. And the, and the running backs, about three to four, maybe five deep. Uh, a lot of talent on the field. And Bryce, again, a uh, big day for him as far as throwing and running the football. Guys, we see in the comments section, always good to hear from you, Jarvis. Uh, Julie on there as well. All you guys, Roll Tide, hit us up in those comment sections. We'll get to some of the questions that you have if you put them in there uh, at the end of the show. Yeah, Jay, I mean, it's hard to believe we're, we're a week in now and the Alabama dead ahead going for Texas, but the AP top 25 just came out. Bama with 44 first place votes. Georgia was 17. So people are starting to pay attention. Now, Georgia into the number two slot, Ohio state with two first place votes, then Michigan and Clemson. I didn't think Clemson looked really good in the first half of their game, but no. uh, your thought on Georgia, the way that they played against Oregon, and now the fact that they've got 17 first-place votes. Ohio State struggled against Notre Dame but won the game. Yeah, I think I told you after the game, Mick, that they were my number two team. I'm like, this is I mean, to me, they're, they're the number two team of the country. They could easily be at number one because of how they played against Oregon and the quality of opponent they played that first weekend. Um and then you look at – I don't – USC, I don't still don't think should be in the top ten. I mean, I, I just don't think they should be there. I think they got a lot more to prove. I think they're getting a little Lincoln-Riley push there by the voters and the AP wanting to see USC be relative again and irrelevant again and uh, have a chance to be be there. So there, there's your top 13, I guess we got up right now, with Bama, Georgia, Ohio State, and I'm surprised they dropped. They didn't look that great against Notre Dame, but at the same time I think Notre Dame had them play an ugly game and really got them in there tempo the things they wanted to do and really controlled that game at the line of scrimmage especially michigan i thought looked really well uh clemson i, I agree with you last night watching them uh, and i watched them in spring practice and i really wasn't bought in on this team i felt like they didn't have the same type of talent up front in the trenches especially on the offensive line defensive line is different um but and it also just in the skill players being able to get guys that dj could throw to and he looked very um skittish last night i guess you might say didn't look very confident uh, early on it looks like now after the freshman comes in and has the 60, 66 yard drive looked really good as far as the tempo his demeanor seemed better as far as on the field the way that he was more energetic and i think the team really responded to that so you're hearing some of the uh i guess people out there the fans kind of wanting to see maybe more playing time for him if dj can't get things in order but i like the fact that that um that dad was sticking behind his guy He's saying all the right things about him right now, but DJ's going to go out and prove it. If not, that they look like they've got a pretty good one behind him. Yeah, right. Well, I mean, we've seen it before in the past. You know, uh, when Bryant mm -hmm. was their quarterback and he struggled, then they brought in the freshman who just so happens to be, uh, well, he turned out to be a number one pick in the draft and the quarterback in Jacksonville, right? So he turned out yeah. to be a pretty good one. Pretty and good one. We, we also saw the same thing with, um, with Alabama. You know, Jalen Hurts, who's in the NFL as a starting quarterback, lost his job to Tua, right? So, I mean, if the, if the second quarterback moves the team better, it doesn't mean that the first quarterback's not good. It just means that the team moves better with the second quarterback. So, uh, going to be interesting <laughs> to see how, how kind of Clemson moves forward. Let's talk about the SEC teams other than Alabama that are in the top 25. You got Texas A&M six right now, although they really haven't played anybody yet. And then Florida made the jump from out of the poll to number 12, and they're one spot ahead of Utah after they beat them. 
Yeah, I mean, I thought Florida looked great. Billy Napier had his team ready to play. He used Richardson like he hasn't been used. It's kind of like looking at going, that guy's been on the bench for two years. What was Dan Mullen thinking? <laughs> and not being able to use him correctly, I guess. I don't know. But um, that's pretty amazing. They go out of the top 25 and at number 12. But they were that impressive and, and beat a Utah team that a lot of people had high expectations for this year. Yeah, and then that makes that Florida-Kentucky matchup a top 20 matchup now that's coming up on Saturday. Kentucky's number 20. Arkansas in between Florida and Kentucky is number 16. And uh, then you got Tennessee, who's playing at Pitt this week at number 24. So the SEC uh, threw out the top 25, but but mostly from – uh, well, one and six, but it doesn't seem like a normal year where you got like five or six SEC teams in the top 10 right now, only two. Yeah, and I thought of Arkansas, I mean, again, a lot of expectation for them this year, Kentucky as well. Uh, Ole Miss, uh, you know, I mean, they had their, their fair share of moments. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's not quite, even the preseason wasn't quite what we're normally seeing in the SEC. But Georgia and Alabama right now are just steps ahead of, right. of, of the other teams. I was surprised Ohio State didn't play as well as they did, especially offensively. But they got a good defensive coordinator, and he showed that uh, against Notre Dame, especially in the second half. They made some adjustments. Ryan Day was able to get the offense kind of in a flow. And Ohio State able to pull that off and, and get the win, but they didn't get an impressive win over a team that even though a lot of people thought, okay, yeah, they're probably a top-10 team right now based on what they got coming back, but a lot of a lot of uh, unknowns about them. But I thought Notre Dame played well. Uh, in that matchup. And, um, you know, I think for them, sitting at that number eight spot, probably a good spot, but I, I still think they're maybe not quite as good as everybody thinks they are right now. Yeah, right. Alabama and Georgia way ahead of everyone else. And then that's kind of what we saw last year, right? And, and you know, we had the matchup twice. Uh, mm-hmm. It was a split, you know, and besides that, both of those teams seemed to crush just about everyone else that they played except the slip that Alabama had against Texas A&M. So they're in the, the top 25. Any other thoughts about the top 25 that has come out? It's only set week two, right? But here we go. Uh, probably, I mean, probably not. I mean, I, I think they where it is right now, I still – I mean, Clemson, I don't, I don't know if they look like a top five team. Uh, they look like maybe a top 15 team at, at the most, in, in my opinion, based on – just watching how Georgia Tech was able to move move the football against them. I thought their quarterback played great last night. I thought he had some really nice throws and drops there early on as well. And I, I felt like, man, this this guy's really kind of turned uh, turned the page as far as his career and what he's done at Georgia Tech. But, um, you know, for them, they lost two key defensive players, one to injury, one because of the penalty uh, targeting. So they lost those two. After that happened, I mean, Clemson was then able to move the football. It was a totally different game after that. Yeah, yeah, and I thought Clemson kind of hung in there. It was a fun game to watch last night. I, I, I like the idea of having college football on Monday night. I know that mm-hmm. this was kind of a, a, a one-off because the NFL starts up on Thursday, but it was fun having this game, and for three quarters, we had a pretty good game. We did, and, and I think, you know, again, gosh, I mean, D, poor DJ. I mean, I wish he could get things kind of moving. He, he was such a talent coming out of, out of uh, high school, and it, even watching some of his balls last night, Mick, I mean, they weren't coming out of his hand very good. They weren't spinning. They were kind of a dead rotation and wobbly at times uh, out to the receivers. Some of them were really hard throws as well. They were t- tough to catch coming out of the backfield. So he, he's you know, hopefully can get it back together. He's lost a lot of weight. He did look quicker last night. He, he looked more, uh, dis, you know, as far as his decision making, uh, that he was doing all the right things. He just couldn't complete the, the drive or the pass or the run. He slipped down a couple of times had the fumble, had the interception uh, early on. I mean, just a lot of things that uh, you got to correct and clean up when it comes to playing at a high level like Clemson wants to play at. Yeah, and look, for Alabama, there's some recruiting battles right now with Dabo Sweeney and Clemson, you know. So just mm-hmm. as an Alabama guy, you know, I'm, I'm not saying as much as I do like Dabo that it doesn't uh, break my heart to see them struggle because, <laughs> you know, I, I want they're, – they're in the mix right now. They're getting Peter Woods, who might be the best defensive lineman in the state, right? And for Alabama, I mean, they lost some of those recruiting battles and we see, you know, saw those guys beat the Crimson Tide in two national championships, you know. So, I mean, this is – a, a big rivalry as far as recruiting goes. Alabama just continues to to do what Alabama does, and that's be consistent. Last year was a struggle for Clemson, and then this kind of feels like it might be another struggle season for them. I, and I'll tell you, again, watching that spring game, I just everybody's like, man, they're going to be – I'm like, I don't see it. I mean, I, I don't see the talent 
on, on both sides of the football. I'll see it at the skill position, um, the size of their offensive linemen and, and just the way that they move around up front. I mean, DJ, even though he made some bad decisions, he, he was – I mean, they were on it. They were getting pushed up the middle, and they weren't getting any push on the run game. Uh, they've, they've got to really clean those things up, and I know Dabo's got the staff to do it. The key is going to be to have the players to do it. And, uh, you know, it's been a team that back in early in his career there, they were able to recruit well, get some great players in. Their recruiting classes have not been very – you know, not been the highest as they've been at times before. So that's where they've got to get better at, the coaching staff and all of them trying to figure out a way to continue to win. So here, here's the thing. Even though they – had a tough night. Um, you know they're going to play the ACC schedule, which is not going to be that tough, and they're going to still have a shot to be uh, be there if they just play clean football and get DJ moving in the right direction. No doubt about it. it's going to be a lot of fun to see what happens. the The advantage that Clemson has over teams in the SEC is that the ACC is normally so weak that you know you can kind of get away with a slow start. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you don't have as many uh, roadblocks ahead. And, uh, you know, who, who knows, maybe by the end of the season, they're one of the best teams in the country. They're getting the respect as a team that maybe played three years ago. Um, but, you know, how much of that is reputation and how much of that is what they've done out on the field? Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of it is both. I mean, they've done a lot on the field. They've got a lot, I mean, Dad was really built up that reputation. I'll never forget uh, the Clemsoning that he hated to hear about. Everybody <laughs> said, well, this Clemsoning again. He's like, where do you come up with that term? Like, wh who created this? But, uh, yeah, D Dabo is a great friend. He's done a terrific job there. Look, I root for him when he's not playing us. want to see them do well, but I don't want to see him do well in recruiting like we do. <laughs> I don't. I want to see, you know, all the – everything that he can get without doing anything that's going to harm University of Alabama. Yeah, no doubt about it. All right, well, let's uh, – guys, before we bring on Trent Richardson and talk about Alabama and Texas, let me remind you that as you hang out with us here on the Bama Insider YouTube channel, like and subscribe. Hit the thumbs up. That's a way that you say roll tide to us wherever you might be watching today. And hit the bell so you know when we go live. And also right now, $1, you get uh, an entire year of Bama Insider on three. That's $1 for 12-month subscription. Join that. You get all the recruiting information with Andrew Bone and – and Joseph Hastings, you get all of the message board fun with Jimmy Stein and Clint Lamb. Kyle Henderson's on there. Uh, you get just great Alabama coverage, and it's for one dollar. I mean, you can't beat that. I don't think you can buy much these days with a dollar. All right, well, let's bring him on as we talk about Alabama and Texas. He was the star of the 2009 championship <laughs> game. We were all there. And uh, I got to tell you, when uh, when Trent broke that run to uh, really break Texas's back, I was uh, elated because, look, that was my first ever Alabama championship. So uh, welcome to the show, Trent. Roll Tide. Hola. Roll, roll Tide. Hola. <laughs> <laughs> Como está? Como está? Back from Mexico. Yeah, man, I'm back. And man, I'm happier than ever to be back, man. Uh and get to be around my family, get to, you know, my kids, get to be around their friends and stuff. And so it was different, man, but I had a lot of fun over there. Um, but, man, you know, talking about that Texas run, you know, that's, that was a special run for me, man, because it was right behind Mike Johnson. He's from Pensacola like I am. And he actually grew up playing football with my older brother and I actually got to play on the team with him my freshman year in college. And so that was a special moment for me. Yeah, one of my one of my really good friends, Mike Johnson, been – Done shows with him in the past, you know. Great you guy. Got, yeah, you Pensacola guys breaking that run out, and uh, I can see the. Uh, I had the picture in my house, like the the picture of you going into the end zone, going into that matchup with Texas. You know, it wasn't like it is now, where everybody expected Alabama to win. You guys had a lot to prove that day. Well, it, you know, it, it's funny because like that was a school I wanted to go to growing up, and because I love Ricky Williams, I love Vince Young. You know, that was like one of those schools that I really wanted to recruit me. And they didn't recruit me until the last minute. They had a guy, and I'll never forget this, they had a guy they was recruiting, man, Chris Whaley. Played, he ended up playing defensive tackle. He was like 6'3", maybe 250 in high school playing running back. Wow. And they, yeah. And uh, <laughs> it, it was crazy because, uh, you know, he did good in Texas high school football, but when he got to college, he ended up playing defensive tackle. Um, and I remember them telling me that they were going to take more running backs because they promised the guy – that they wasn't going to take no more. But it was a special moment for me, man, because my top three schools I wanted to go to was Alabama, of course, uh, Florida, and uh, Texas. So I played both of them teams that year in a, national, in a championship game. I played Florida in the SEC championship game. I played Texas in the national championship game. 
And so all my guys that I, you know, went on recruiting visits with um, from Florida to Texas, we all played against each other. And, and I was really the only freshman player um, at the time mm-hmm. other than Nico Johnson and, and, and um, Drake Kirkpatrick played. Um, but, you know, that was a big name in that game. And, that you know, so that run right there is probably my favorite run of my career, my college career, because that meant so much to me. Um, and, and to be a freshman, to score two times in that game, that's big. When the quarterback goes out early, did you guys have – was there a little bit of a letdown or was there any kind of a feeling around the team or, uh, on the sideline in the locker room? Well, it, for, for us, it was a letdown because we was playing – we playing for right. Coach the whole time. And so, for real, like, we didn't game plan for a quarterback to be sitting in the pocket. You know, Coach moved around a lot in the pocket and he was able to, you know, use his feet more too. And so, when, when, when Marcel knocked him out – you know, that was, you know, for us, it was, you know, and for me, I was a fan of Colt. You know, I, I grew up watching Texas football. And so, you know, to not see him play and not, you know, get the opportunity. I mean, I guess he did get the opportunity. He just got knocked out early. But, um, <laughs> did you get his autograph after the game? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's crazy <laughs> because I ended up going to the Browns where he was drafted at too. And so, did you get his autograph then? <laughs> no, nah, you know, we, we actually <laughs> talked mess to each other because I would tell him he hadn't been able to throw since Marcel knocked him out. <laughs> <laughs> and so we kind of go back and forth. He's like, oh, man, if I would have played, I said, you, well, you did play, you know, and, and you know, we, we really – got to protect yourself. Yeah, we really prepared <laughs> for you. We didn't prepare for Blaine. You know, we, we Blaine, you know, he actually got down the field and actually scored on us. You didn't get a score in, so. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that – and I've heard some of your other teammates talk about this, Greg McElroy, who was the quarterback. I think I heard him say on ESPN something like that maybe you guys wouldn't have won had Colt McCoy – played in the game what do you think about that you said greg said that well that's what i i, re- I kind of remember him alluding to that in the past i know greg that. i know greg probably heard somebody saying that i know greg <laughs> <laughs> i remember scratching my head going am i listening to this right maybe i heard him wrong but uh, what do you think would have happened had he played i think it would have been a, i think it would have been worse than what it was i think it would have been a blowout and yeah. because we we prepare for him when you prepare for that guy that's been your quarterback the whole time. I mean, we had all type of blitzes for the coming, you know, coat. And, and Nick always, you know, you give Nick too much time to prepare for a game. You know, we already we already know the end of results uh, of that. You know, that day was going to be. Um, for us, we, like we we were so you know prepared. We was prepared for that game way back in camp, man. You know, we didn't care who we played. We we in, in the way that we practiced, and, and you know, the mindset from the year before. You know, they they they. The mindset the year before the team that they had was, hey, we're going to go to the SEC championship. And that was it. You know, they didn't think past the SEC championship. And so the year, the, the next year when I got there, it was, hey, we for the win this national championship. And uh, Rolando McClain didn't let us play, pour no Gatorade or no water on Nick Saban until we won that national championship <laughs> game. <laughs> And so, and, and you got to respect that, man, because he was a true leader. I mean, we had guys, Javier, we had Kareem Jackson, we had Mount Cody. And that whole year was just like the perfect year for us, man. And, and everything went our way, man. We had some ups and downs. We had a lot of fight to be doing. I mean, we had one guy get shot in the season, first game of the season, Brandon Dedrick, mm-hmm. and played. He got shot on Wednesday and played Friday. I think we played Virginia Tech on a Friday or Saturday. But he was, you know, we, that's how prepared we was, man. We was ready to go. Talk about going into that 09 game against Texas and Alabama not won a national championship since 17 years ago. I mean, it would have been a long time. And Alabama fans, they expect championships. They want to see teams win. Did y'all know that that was kind of a statement night and also for Coach Saban realizing this can be the beginning of something special? And then because y'all take that game, you know, thought you're going to win it in 10, but you won it 11 and 12. I mean, three national titles in four years. Yeah, and that's crazy. And so – like my whole, yeah, like you said, my class three national championships in four years, but going into that game, man, we knew, you know, what what, what we had to fight for, um, who we was fighting for, um, what was the cost of everything for us. Uh, I mean, I mean, we haven't won a game since you know, uh, national championships since you played, Jay. So, mm-hmm. I mean, that's what you know. It well, hadn't been that long for. ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow, seventeen years. Man, that's crazy. That's what man. Greg asked me one time. Greg goes, "Man, you got 17 years to be the, the last national championship quarterback. I got two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is crazy, huh? That, yeah, I mean, but when you when you get something like that, man, that's 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 that special. I mean, you think about these teams now. 
that that goes. I mean, Harbin before Cam won one day. I mean, they won one what fifty years before that or something like that before Cam won one in Auburn. That's right. Um, I mean, but you look at a program like Alabama, man, where we winning them back to back now. But it started in '09, man, and, and before that it was '92. And so, I mean, what y'all did was beautiful, man. I mean, it, it's never been a team like '92, and, and it'll never be another one. I mean, like the 09 team, it would never be another team like the 09 team. You know, a lot of people like to compare, and you know, and I hate doing that because those two teams there are probably some of the best Alabama teams that is, has ever been to me. Um, but, you know, just making that statement that night, man, it, it was big. We knew what it was going to be. And we knew that, you know, coming away up to California and being in this game, and, and we know that they've been in the game before, you know, with Vince Young, and you know that they had, they did have their experience and coming under, you know, with Nick that he did. And that, that was the first time, guys, I seen Nick Saban spit. When I mean spit, chew, and, and yeah, that was the first time I ever seen. <laughs> Uh, and I was like, what's going on? I'm like, is he nervous or something? I mean, you know, but it's just all the nerves that you got going into that game. And I've never, and I've always seen the, you know, the, the what's comes Speak around. Ups. I, yeah, I was <laughs> I always seen the, the bags of tobacco around the office, right. but I've never right. seen him do it. And so when I seen him do it, and I've, and I've seen Nick chew on, you know, chew on a, 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 a paper cup, yeah. you know, kind of bite it with his teeth or, you know, kind of fidget with his nails a little bit. But I've never seen him like that, man. And so, when he got locked in, man, I knew, you know, what it was, man. And, you know, and, and actually being at that bowl game, like that Rose Bowl, that is, if heaven had a football field, that, that definitely should be it. And that's a great way mm-hmm. of describing it. We were talking about it. It was like walking into history that night, you know, on that field. And uh, I, I don't I don't know if I've ever had a better moment in sports. I've told Mike Johnson this. I guess that's why your team's so special to me, just because I went to school at Alabama, just missed Jay. And then and then here you guys come. And it was just an incredible run. And it because so many of those guys were there when we weren't good. And then they were part of the process and bought in. I think that makes that team special. What did Nick mm-hmm. Saban say to you guys in the locker room before that game? What do you remember about that? And then compare it to the other pregame speeches because you won three championships. So, you know, compared to the 2011 and 12 team, right? Oh, man, you know, it, it, it just come back to, you know, him being prepared uh, mentally. I mean, Nick, his pregame speeches, man, are, are the best ever, man. And really – you know, it's not really the pregame speeches. It's the halftime speeches that he do. And and they be immaculate, man. And I'm telling you, man, he tell you, give y'all, give me 60 minutes. That's all I ask for. You prepared your whole life for this. Not just um, not just training camp your whole life since you've been in Little League football. You know, since you've been coming out the wound, this is the moment that you fight for. You know, you hear stuff like that, man. It, it gives, It's giving me the chills right now just thinking about that, <laughs> back in that locker room, man. Because, I mean, that guy there, man, had us ready to run through a brick wall, man. You got a question for him, Mick, on the uh, Super Chat? Yeah, yeah. David wants to know your most memorable run. You said it was Texas. I was at the Ole Miss game, though, when you broke that guy's ankles uh, sitting in that end zone that day, too. What year was that? Was that the same? Was that 2009? I mean, all those years kind of run together. But you know the run he's talking about down yeah, at Ole was, Miss that was on all the highlights. I think that was 11, wasn't it? Was yeah, it 11? 2011. Yeah, yeah. That was my last year. And, and you know, it's kind of crazy because I kind of tell people all the time, you know, about the runs that I really love. And I really don't mention that run as much. But, you know, for me, that day was special because my daughter was turning five and I said, babe, I'm going to score. She, I said, how many touchdowns you want me to score? She said five. I said, I'm all right, I'm, I'm going to score five. And I knew it was going to be hard. And, um, <laughs> but I ain't not scoring five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I knew if I got to have that, we were going to be in a good place. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so um, I ain't not scoring five. They called one back, but I ain't not scoring five. And so... That day was special for me. I mean, I had just, um, I think I had just left my aunt's funeral or she had just passed on that day or something. It was something near that, but it was it was more like, you know, she was playing with me the whole time. And so, you know, when you when you think about that run, that man, that run was special because I told Coach, because like early that game, he had, you know, hit me in the backfield. He had, you know, swiped my leg from underneath. He had came backside. I said, Coach, he's cheating. So if he cheat, <laughs> I'm going to make a miss. He was like, okay. And Coach Burns was like, if you do that, you you know you know you're not gonna follow your block. You, you better make up for it. And I said I got you, coach. So we went right back to it. And the guy I made a miss in the backfield first. You know a lot of people don't realize that. And then he got downfield. I waited on my blockers. And all I could think about is man, I gotta get in this end zone. I don't care this far. I gotta get in this end zone. And all of this is running through my head at the same time. So I slowed down and waited for Marquise Mays. And I mean even my lineman was downfield blocking. Man, it was running. They was hauling tail, man. 
And so those moments like that, man, and so uh, it, it's so special, man, because them teams there, man, because all them guys was there in the process when, you know, we wasn't so good, you know, when we was just okay, when we mm-hmm. was just a regular team. And so, and now you see, you know, just being okay and not good now is, you know, just not winning that championship nowadays. You know, it's something different now. <laughs> But you know, being 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 on that team that year, man, and making that run was it, it was truly special, man. We were talking earlier about the top twenty-five and Georgia now at number two. They could be at number one. There's a lot of voters that voted. They got what seventeen votes, I think it was. But talk about, and I know you're doing that. <laughs> you're shaking your head a little bit. But you, but you, but you were with Kirby, and mm-hmm. is that right? Yeah, Kirby was there with you. So just, are you surprised how how well they've done and? They've won a championship, the recruiting classes that they've had, and, and everything that he's done for Georgia. No, I'm not surprised, man. And I'm surprised he didn't win one earlier. And, yeah. you know, for me, for a long time, it was kind of like, okay, you know, Nick Nick has prepared you for this moment. And, you know, you got you to gotta beat your daddy someday. You know what I'm saying? And not saying that's his father, but, you know, like I tell. <laughs> oh, he's his daddy. Go ahead and say it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like I give people examples of, you know, me yeah. and my son. Me and my son play sports all the time in the video the game together all the time. And I've learned now that, you know, he, he's pretty good at Madden, so I don't play him in Madden anymore. I play him in games that I can kind of beat him in, in, in 2K and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I've learned to, you know, it's like when we do like regular sports, like I like I, I teach you everything that that you know, not everything that I know. And so right. the game this year, <laughs> I want to I want to see how Nick going to respond. And, and, you know, from what everything, how everything transpired last year, I think Nick is really on the on a bench uh, playlist right now, man. Especially starting with Texas A&M. <laughs> yeah. How's TJ doing? Oh, man, that, that dude. Uh, you know what, Jay? It's, you know, it's never He's really special, nothing, man. Yeah, that I can't not say about him, man. I mean, that, that he's smart. He, he's he's a great big brother. Man, TJ did something the other day, Jay, and I'm going to show you when we get in the studio tomorrow. Um, we was uh, his his brother. My my, you know, my youngest son is playing football now too, and mm-hmm. so he got hurt at practice. He I, he kind of pulled his growing, and so um, you know I was trying to see how tough he was going to be. I was I'm like, you still got to go to school, you know, and so <laughs> and you're growing, kept, not yeah. a concussion. Yeah, and so TJ <laughs> kept coming to the door, said, "Dad, you know he don't feel good, and you know I don't think he should go to school." And I said, "Y'all better go get ready for school." And so TJ was already ready. So Tor was coming down the stairs and, you know, he had helped him down the stairs. And so I'm looking at the ring on the, on the door. And so TJ picked up his brother and took him to the bus stop. Oh, wow. And I'm sitting there. And like, you saw it on man. the, fa- you saw it on the video. Yeah, man. I'm oh, wow. Like, man, that is crazy, man. But man, like football right now, man, we can't get nobody to play us on a national level right now. Like they all scared of us. Wow! And to everybody, what are you talking about? Us, your your little league team. So when I so now we're with uh, we're with Big Tribe now, and we got these group of guys um, that's that's just tremendous, man. And these kids work hard. And they come from you know all the way around, um, you know, from our nine U team. And you know, man, they special, man. They went to uh, nationals last year, got third place. And I mean, TJ just showed up, man. And now we're with a group of guys now that he's not just the only one that's kind of, you know, that's everybody got a key on. And I, and I put him in that situation because I want him to, you know, to, to be around guys with his, you know, type talent, you know, caliber players. And, and that was the reason I chose to go, go to Alabama. I could have went anywhere, but if I'm on a team with Mark Ingram, Julio Jones, we, we, I mean, we still had Terry Grant at the time. We still had Glenn Coffey. We had a, Marcel Darius, we had a world church and a lot of them. If I can shine on a team like that, I can play with anybody. Mm-hmm. And so I, and I kind of put TJ in that situation to see, you know, how would he respond to everything. And so his first day out there, so, you know, we was in Mexico for four months, but his first day out there, you know, um, so they, you know, they've been having guys play quarterback and stuff like that. You know, TJ really want to play receiver for real, but he's a natural quarterback. So TJ, you know, they're, they're in the drill. And he's going against the defense. He look off the he look off the coverage right. He throw it back to the left, and so everybody's like, "We got to start a quarterback." Like, <laughs> like these guys had three, four months before you know TJ. Yeah, got it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, man. But I am the athletic director now at Iron Dare Youth Sports, and so man, um, my, my actually my son, we got we got two different parts to playing right now. So my son playing for the eight U team. He's actually playing upper grade, 
you know, he scored his first touchdown last uh, last Saturday. Jay, he, uh, he he had carried three of them across the across the goal line and stretched it across. <laughs> man, I was That's proud awesome. of him because coming off that growing injury, man, that you know that he kind of getting his his groove back. Y'all don't want anything at Center Point Ballpark. Don't mess with Center Point Ballpark. No, Man. don't go down there. <laughs> Trent, Trent, let me ask you a question about playing for Nick Saban. Not just the football part of it, but you know, Mike Johnson has told me before that he feels like he's he's really successful in life for having the opportunity to play with Nick Saban. Not football related, just life related. Do you feel the same way? And what were the lessons that you learned from Coach Saban? Oh man, it, it's so many lessons I learned. I use them in my everyday life, man, with my kids and my family. And so it, it's nothing that I don't do that don't remind me of Nick or, you know, being around Alabama. It, that man has done so much for me outside of football, you know, just for life. I can never repay him for what he's done for me and my family. And I say that with the with the with the deepest of my heart because that guy there has, you know, really um changed my life for us, you know, the way I think and, and you know how to build relationships and, you know, and, and how to build on a business part too. Um, and I was telling guys and, 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 you know, and I was trying to show guys when I was in Mexico, cause they was like, you know, why you don't go out and why you don't do all the, you know, hanging with everybody. I was like, well, one thing I've learned, you know, and being around Nick, and like, you don't have to do all that to entertain people. And then most of the time you got cameras on you. And they was like, man, I don't, you know, I don't get what you mean. And so something went wrong with, with one of the players and, you know, they kind of got a little taste on. I was like, that's exactly what I meant. Well, where, hey, you don't, you don't have to hang out with everybody. You don't do what everybody else do. You know, you learn how to separate yourself and, you know, you stay to yourself and you, you're nine times out of ten, you'll stay out of trouble. And, and and so these guys, you know, I'm trying to teach these guys what I've learned. And, and, and like I said, I can never repay Nick you know, or Burton Burns, man. A lot of people don't realize Burton Burns is really in that running back room. He's the guy that really has, you know, helped out a lot of guys and put a lot of guys through school. He, he was on me the other day, man. He said, Trent, you're the only one that have not Well, he said me and Eddie was the only one who haven't went back and got they finished their degree yet. And so um and now I gotta finish my thirteen I got thirteen hours I gotta finish. I gotta finish my thirteen hours. That's why I'm in the office right now, Jay. <laughs> Well, it's awesome yes. having you, Trent. Hey, give us a prediction on the uh, on the game before we let you get back to your studies. Ah oh, man, uh, mm, I like Stark, man. Uh, um, I think he he's a guru when it comes to offense, but I don't know if if he's going to be able to do all that, you know, the screen tunnels and stuff like that, and, and, and you know, just going deep all the time. I don't know if he's going to have enough time. You know, with that defense line we got right now. Um, so I say uh, 34, uh, 34, 6. <laughs> two field goals. Yeah, yep. two like field goals. All right, one more fan question, and then this is it for you. Uh, besides Brian Denny, what are some of the other places that you were pumped to play? Oh, LSU. LSU, man. Uh, I, man, oh, it's, it's tough. LSU, Auburn, and I love quieting up Tennessee Stadium, man. I love making that stadium quiet. <laughs> that one in Auburn. Yeah, that one in Auburn, man. And then for me, I'm from Florida, so, man, it, I loved all the SEC, man. Only ones I didn't really like was uh, uh, Mississippi State. I hated going back to the locker room because it's, uh, it's up a hill. Mm -hmm. They make us go way up a hill. Then those cowbells, is, you know, really loud. Um, Arkansas was, you know, it was okay. Uh, but, you know, between them, I, I say my top three to four, it had to be LSU, um, Auburn, of course, Florida, and um, who else did I just say? Uh, Tennessee. Awesome. Awesome. Yes, sir. Did you meet any cartel while you were down in Mexico? And I'm pretty sure I met a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> but, man, you know what, man? Everybody's cool down there, Jay. That's when I realized, like, everybody's a family. And they work hard, man. I'm telling you, like, we didn't practice until, like, eight. 830 because oh, wow. all the you know all the Mexicans was working in the daytime like everybody mm -hmm. else had different jobs and, and so man I was like man y'all so is the difference between them and Canada Canada they, they have to be there about what one so they mm -hmm. work half half a day in Canada <laughs> they work a full day in Mexico before right. they practice yeah they work a full day like I remember um, talking to one of the guys he was sitting there telling me like man I um like I say, so what is your schedule? Like, man, I work all day. I go see my kids for 30 minutes, and I travel 50 miles to come here. Wow, wow. I was like, wow. I realize how blessed we are, do we? 
Yeah, yeah really. Said, I respect you. I respect you for that. Well, Trent, we yeah. really appreciate you coming you, on man. and talking Texas and Alabama with us and uh, and sharing so many great stories, man. Roll Tide. Thanks for coming yes, on. Yes, sir. Roll See Tide, man. Yes, right. sir. Trent will be in studio with us tomorrow, so look forward to that. Yeah, that'll be great. Yeah, I gotta, I'm got. i going to have to listen. That was great, man. That was mm-hmm. a great show. It was awesome listening to him and, and uh, talking story and – you know, and doing all that. Guys, get your comments in. We're going to get to your questions. I see there's a really good question in there that we'll ask later on in the show. Like and subscribe as you hang out with us here on the Bama Insider YouTube channel. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed that interview with Trent Richardson. Hey, Jay hooked it up. Give Jay a high five by giving us a thumbs up, right? <laughs> uh, Alabama and Texas play 11 a.m. on Saturday, Jay. And I, I love this this coaches conference steve sarkeesian former alabama offensive coordinator coordinator and now the um head coach of texas was asked a few questions let's watch this and then i want to get your thoughts on kind of what he said because i thought that he made a, he said a couple of things in here that are worth talking about okay um we remember what happened the last time Texas and Alabama played each other. First part, where were you watching that game and what do you remember kind of thinking about it? And then also just big picture, what does this matchup against Alabama mean just for the state of the program? Um, honestly, I have no idea where I was. Um, I'm not sure if I Literally. watched it. I assume I did, um, but I had no skin in the game. You know, I, I'm guessing I watched it, but... I had no skin in the game, right? I wasn't at Alabama. I wasn't at Texas. I was probably just a fan enjoying the game. And, um, you know, I think we all wish if Colt was in the game, what would happen? I don't, I don't know, you know, but, but that's, that's that. Uh, as far as this game goes, you know, it's, it's one game, you know, it's a chance for us to do what we love to do. You know, we only get 12 ops. We only get 12 ops in the regular season every year to go play the game of football for all of the hard work these guys put in for nine months leading up to it. And then they get a chance to go perform. And we get a chance to do it at home uh, in front of 100,000 unbelievable fans that will be here, I know, in, in great support. I want to make sure we enjoy the experience. That, that's what this one means. I want to make sure our guys feel confident enough because they're prepared really well uh, to take in the moment and then go cut it loose and, and go play our style of football. Um, and then after that, we'll, we'll get ready for the next one. And then after that one, then we'll get ready for big 12 play. So um, I, I think one of the, one of the biggest mistakes people make is like, this is going to be the game that's going to define our program. I don't, it might, it might not. I'm not that concerned about it. I'm more concerned about just the way we play the game, you know, um, said all along, my goal is to be in Dallas, December 3rd, right? This game has no impact on that. Right? It'd be great. It's an awesome opponent. I want to play really well. I, I want to make sure that our guys play our style of football, our brand of football, and do it the way that I know we're capable of doing it. Um, I'm sure they're saying the same thing in their locker room, right? Because we don't impact them going to the SEC championship game either. But it's an awesome opportunity. Two good teams, two good coaching staffs, and in an unbelievable environment, it'd be a, it'd be a great setting for college football. Wow. So a couple of things there. Uh, first off, you know, it, I feel like he's kind of downplaying this matchup a little bit, and it might be a good idea. Yeah, I try not to eat any bulletin board material. Plus, number one, we don't play for SEC titles. We play for national championships, so this game does matter. Uh, you want to stay undefeated. You want to keep staying at that number one spot and just being in that top four. Um, but I, I really I thought he handled it very well. I thought the, the press conference, the things he had to say about Nick Saban, Alabama, just about the fact that I'm not going to give you anything to put up there. You know, And he's tried to say, look, this doesn't define the season for them. And it shouldn't. I mean, it should be a, a situation where you're playing against a great opponent. They got a lot of young players, especially a quarterback with yours, seeing whether or not he can handle the pressure Alabama's going to try to put on him to help him or try to make him make mistakes and turn the ball over or just do something, um, you know, mentally that's going to get him kind of out of the game a little bit. But, you know, Sark, Sark's a good dude, man. I, I was around him. He coached Bryson, Bryson's first two years there. And um, just he, he was always so good about trying to, um, you know, do the right things for the players, put them in great position in order to make plays. And he's been on a tough road himself, um, you know, off the field. Yeah. And so he's, I think he's very thankful for where he's at right now. 
Yeah. Yeah. Look, I mean, he's an easy guy to like. We mm-hmm. all have our issues in life. Right. And you got to give him a lot of credit for being able to overcome those because the way that things ended for him at USC weren't good. Yeah. Uh, but also give Nick Saban a lot of credit too. look. I, I get it. Nick Saban wants to win football games. So he's going to go out and try to get the best guys that he can get to win football games. But there's another part of that as well. When you give someone a second chance and Sark's, taken big advantage so far that second chance he has done a great job with it and he's an offensive genius he really is i mean he's done it did it at usc did it at washington did it somewhat in nfl even though they didn't have quite the success he wanted to have they came back to alabama and uh, able to do a great job there so you got to give him credit where credit's due and it, this should be a great matchup i think alabama should win by a good bit we'll talk more about that on thursday with our predictions but um you know we'll see this is a very talented Alabama football team going into a hostile environment. The key is the environment, the 11 a.m. start, all that type of stuff is going to be be fun to watch. And then no million-dollar band. I can't believe they announced that today that uh, they're not going to make it out to the game. Wow. No, they I haven't up, even heard that. Yeah, they put them up in the um, upper deck, and there's not enough room to get all the band at the game. So the uh, band director decided they're not going to travel to Texas. I hate that. I think it's good <laughs> to have the band there. Yeah, yeah, really. Well, maybe mm-hmm. next year when Texas comes to town, there won't be enough room for their band. <laughs> right could happen i don't know right um uh, wow uh how about this i feel like this game and i asked trent about the greg mcelroy cre- you know question you know just because i'd seen him on tv maybe i got it mm-hmm. wrong i don't know but uh, uh, other people said the same thing to me too even some guys that you know had a lot of significance in that game that and that's not to say that greg was wrong that if, if colt mccoy would have been in the game it could have been different i mean he was one of the best quarterbacks in the country yeah. Alabama wasn't proven like they are. I love the answer, though, that Trent gave. He said, look, if, if Greg McElroy would have been in the game, I mean, excuse me, if uh, Colt McCoy would have been in the game, we, we would have just beat him by more, right? So Because they were prepared awesome. for him. Yeah, they yeah. were ready for him, right? The other guy, uh, Gilbert, yeah, Gilbert, they weren't ready yeah. for, right? No, they had not, played, not really practiced against him. I mean, they looked at a couple of things. But they never thought he was going to come in the game, so they didn't worry about a pocket passer. They were worried about a guy that could run the things that Colt did well, and that's the things they really concentrated on. They, they focused in on him going into that game. So when Gilbert came in, I was at the game. I'm like, okay, I've heard a lot about this kid, and you know, this could be a really tough night for him, or this could be a chance where you go out there, there's no pressure, nobody's expecting you to win, so that, you know, all that's out, out the door. Um, is a backup quarterback. You're going to come in and do the best you can, and he made some great throws and really kept him in the game. And, and I think Trent's right. I think if it had been Colt McCoy, because I think as a team, you kind of – when you've built up everything that week and in the weeks leading up to it to play that guy who at that time was what up for the Heisman or what had already been a part of all that talk that you're you're excited about playing that guy and then when he, when he goes out early on there is a little bit of a letdown psychologically emotionally mentally for a team so you know you kind of kind of bounce back from that but they did they won the championship yeah, it's it's funny that the Sark was asked that question in the press conference. Yeah, you know, hey, I don't know where he, where where I was that day, but if you know, if Colt McCoy would have been in the game, you know, who knows what would have happened. Right. This this matchup to me, two of the best helmets in college football. I love the uniforms too. When I walked into the stadium uh, to the uh, Rose Bowl for the game in two thousand nine. That seeing you know the burnt orange on one side and the crimson on the other, uh, and and split right down the middle, uh, I got chills like like Trent said. I got chills just thinking about it. He said it was mm-hmm. Nick Saban's halftime press conference. To me, it was just walking in there and just being a part of something so special as an Alabama grad and someone that loves the university. Uh, and hopefully that'll be the next two years when these two teams play. Uh, it'll be a similar result. But on Saturday at eleven o'clock, this is what college football is all about. Can't wait. It's going to be so much fun. All right, Jay, last thing we're going to do is go to the comments and and, uh, answer some uh, questions here. David wants to know, and he asked me this on another show and and, and then brought it back today. So, David, kudos to you. Uh, Have you ever thought about being a quarterback coach at Bama? I've I've thought about it, and actually early on, I mean, if if I would not have gone to the NFL at that time, if I could have gone back and worked with Coach Stallings and and started at that particular time, would have loved that to have been able to coach and stuff. I I still coach a lot with different with kids, and and also coach my kids all the way through. Now I'm kind of getting freed up with time, so I'm I'm thinking about maybe getting into some high school coaching or maybe maybe looking at the college level. Got uh, got a lot lot of opportunities out there, and. We'll see, but it would be a pleasure to be able to coach uh, any position, just to be on the staff with Nick Saban. I'd love to be down there just watching film with Nick. That would be like a dream come true. Wow. <laughs> this is a, I, this, I would love it. 
You're yeah. gonna, you're gonna get. That's gonna be people gonna be talking about this. I feel like there's <laughs> like something there. Like maybe you know David kind of feels something, and you kind of feel it too. Like sounds like you're open to coaching. I'd love it. I mean, I absolutely love it. But um, you know, you got to start certain places, and um, you know that's. But to be able to be around that and see it and see what he's done and success he's had, I think he teaches not just even what's on the field, off the field, and you know the things that he's done is just. I don't think it's ever going to be repeatable. I said that about Coach Bryant and Coach Saban proved me wrong. But hey, if it's going to be proven wrong, then let it be the next guy at Alabama. <laughs> That makes that makes that happen. Wow, there's a, there's there's one Barker over there already in the coaching staff. You know why not? That's why I one? couldn't do that now. <laughs> <laughs> Let him have his time, no doubt. But he's yeah. oh, he lo- he loves it. We were kidding about a post game show that uh, I saw Braxton Moore the other night than I ever did his whole career on TV. <laughs> Oh, that's that's because he was right there with Bryce and Coach Saban and all them, giving him the headphones, talking to Bill O'Brien. But he's loved it. Oh my gosh, he's a he, he's a grinder like me. He loves to grind, loves to you know, loves watching film, loves being around the sport, and he's getting coached up by you know, not only on the field but also as a coach now by the best ever. Yeah, yeah. Do you miss the locker room? Oh, that's the one thing you miss more than anything. Just no kind doubt. of seeing everybody and joking yeah, around yeah, and doing yeah. all that stuff. No. Jay, any last thoughts? What a great show today. Yeah, thanks to Trent for coming on. He'll be again. He'll be in studio with us tomorrow for our show, the Jay Barker Show with Lars Anderson, Matt Coulter, and you can watch that throughout the state on our network of, of uh, stations. And um, look forward to it. Look, kind of dig, do a deep dive with him as we do every time he comes in. But uh, he's been a big part of our show the last two years, and glad glad, uh, glad to have him back from Mexico. They made it back safe. Yeah, was he playing in a league down there? He, that, was. he was. He got, he's helping develop it and, and put it together. So he went down to do marketing and all types of stuff with it and then also to play in it. And he only had to play like so many games per year. But he loved it. said so he had a blast and it was a great experience for him and his family. Yeah, that sounds like yeah. it. I didn't know that yeah. they had it, but the, the sport's growing. Look, I mean, there's it no is. doubt about yeah. it. The, the NFL's, you know, kind of – hinted that they wouldn't mind having a team in Mexico City, like an mm-hmm. NFL team. So we'll see what happens, right? Yeah, I mean, unless they all come across the border before they can start it. <laughs> <laughs> They'll just be, be over here playing some football. And right. Watching. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, well, for Jay Barker, I'm Mick Gillespie, Chris Daughtry behind the scenes. Special thanks to Kyle Henderson for all the work that he does. Guys, one more time, thanks, like and subscribe and hang out with us here on the Bama Insider YouTube channel. Give us a thumbs up. That's a way of saying roll tide. Hit the bell. That's also a way that you know every time we're going live. And don't forget, you get a full year of Bama Insider on three for just $1. That includes all the latest recruiting with Andrew Bone and Joseph Hastings. That's the message board and all the updates on Alabama football and other sports with Clint Lamb and Jimmy Stein. You got Kyle on there, Kyle Henderson on there. Uh, So, so many cool things going on. $1 for an entire year. We're just trying to bring you on to what we're doing now that we're part of On3. We got a lot of stuff coming up. Anytime Coach Saban speaks, you can watch it here. Jay and I will be back together on Thursday at 2 o'clock to do another one of our Crimson Tide headline shows. We'll be talking a lot of Alabama, Texas. We'll see what transpires before we get there. And tonight at 8 o'clock, Andrew Bone has his recruiting show All of that right here on the Bama Insider YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, guys, and roll tide. Roll tide.